everybody, welcome to Legal Alien Racing. So in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to get started in karting. And this is based off of my personal experience when I got started in karting, and then from just observation from watching other people get into the sport as well. Now I'm gonna to talk to two sets of people. I'm gonna to talk to those karters that just wanna drive and don't wanna race, and then I'm gonna to talk to those karters as well that do have aspirations of racing. Um, so I'm gonna start first with the guys that do wanna race. And for those of you that uh, are rec carters, just stick with me because I'm gonna cover some of the things that also apply to you. So if you wanna get started in karting and you do wanna race, I definitely recommend starting out in rental league racing at your local track. I start out at K1 Speed, and what K1 Speed is, uh, it's an indoor go-kart track that has electric karts. I competed in that, and I competed at Dallas Karting Complex. And what it did for me was it helped solidify that I was interested in, in karting and I did want to continue racing. The other thing it did for me was it gave me race experience, racing in a competitive environment with other carters and and also help my race craft. Race craft is like your racing etiquette, you know, how well you, you pass people like cleanly, uh, getting past cleanly, setting up passes, things like that. So once I had all that racing experience in, in rental league racing, when I got to my first club race, um, I was just a lot more comfortable in that environment. Now granted, uh, club racing and rental league racing are kind of two different things. Uh, the club racing is a lot more intense because you know the speeds are faster and it's your own car and it's a little bit more dangerous and uh, there's a lot more that goes to it. So I definitely recommend starting out in rental league racing before you invest in buying your own cart. So you're probably wondering how long you should race in league racing before you buy your own cart. And the answer to that is that's a personal preference still. It's up to you. Um, just whenever you feel you're ready, you know, move on to the next phase of your karting. It's not mandatory that you start out in rental league racing before you get to club racing. I just think it's a good idea. So now that you figured out you do want a cart race, what you need to do next is find a cart. And you know, you can buy new or you can buy used. And I have a video called Choosing Your First Cart where I detail several different cart classes that are popular in the, in the United States. So I recommend watching that and I'll try to post a uh, link to that below in the description. But in a nutshell, what you're gonna do is go to the local cart track where you're gonna race and find out what everyone there is racing because you do not wanna buy a cart that no one's racing because you're not gonna be able to get into a race. So visit your local cart track, pick their brains, get their opinions, uh, and see what everybody's running. More than likely in the United States, um, you're gonna easily find an LO206 race or a 100cc race, you know, KA100, VLR100, something like that. Those are probably gonna be um, your more popular classes in the United States. So figure out where you're gonna race and, and then go in that direction when you're buying a cart. Also, when you're choosing your cart, make sure you select a cart that you can easily get parts for, whether it's someone local that sells parts for that cart or you can order them online. Just make sure you can get parts for this cart because somebody can give you a monster deal on a cart, but then you can't get parts for it. So it really wasn't a monster deal in my opinion. So just be really mindful of that and choosing a uh, cart uh, brand where you can get the parts for pretty easy. Another piece of advice I wanna give you when you're choosing your first cart is don't get in over your head. I know everybody wants to go really fast and that's cool and all, but if you've never raced anything in your life and you end up getting the fastest cart out there, you're probably gonna walk away pretty frustrated. I definitely think you should start out like an LO206 or a 100cc class, somewhere in there, and then if you wanna go faster later, work your way up to it. So another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is figure out what your budget is. Um, when you get into racing, you're gonna burn through fuel and tires. Um, some carts, of course, like a 100cc cart's gonna use tires up and fuel a lot faster than an LO206, let's say. Uh, you're also gonna go through chains and sprockets. You're going to you know, bend and break parts. You're gonna to have to replace those parts. And there's just miscellaneous things like fuel lines, uh, zip ties, things like that that you're gonna need uh, when you start karting. So just keep in mind that there are uh, racing is an expense 
and it's going to be an ongoing expense and um, just don't get in over your head and, and, and get something that's going to be too expensive to maintain. So keep your budget in mind if, if that's something that you have to look out for. A couple of other expenses you're going to have associated with carting is you're going to have to buy a basic set of tools so you can work on your cart. You're also going to have to purchase a track membership and also consider storage at the track if you don't have a way to transport your cart to and from the track. So those are some other things to consider as well. So a couple of other things you're definitely going to need is going to be your safety equipment. So you're going to need shoes, you're going to need a carting suit, you're going to need gloves, you're going to need a helmet, and you're going to need a rib uh, protector. Now in regards to the shoes, this is not something you have to buy. I see people race in sneakers. Um, I see people race in wrestling shoes because they have the really thin sole just like the carding shoes go. If, in my opinion, if you're going through the expense of getting the carding, you know, get the shoes. Plus they look a lot cooler than sneakers usually. The, um, the carding suit, the, the primary function that is uh, abrasion protection for the driver. Uh, some tracks allow the drivers to wear like a leather jacket and then jeans. That's kind of a personal preference and a rule thing at your local track. So look into that if you're not going to invest in a carding suit. But I definitely recommend, just like the shoes, if you're going to get into the sport, get into the sport and get and get a carding suit. Gloves, you can get those kind of anywhere. And, and I'll make a separate video on gloves and, and talk about those. Um, as far as your helmet goes, make sure your helmet meets the safety requirements that your local track or club requires, okay? So that's really important. And also too, with a lot of this equipment, you know, definitely your helmet. Don't go cheap on it and try to just get the cheapest thing. You know, this, this protects your head and super important part of your body, obviously. So invest a little money and, and get some quality equipment for your, for your head. So a mistake I made when I was buying my carding suit is I tried to go kind of cheap the first time and ended up spending a lot more money down the road had I just bought the cart suit that I really wanted the first time. So if you're able, get the cart suit that you really want that you think is going to meet your needs versus trying to get the cheapest thing and hoping it works out because i ended up buying three different cart suits um, before i found the one i think that really worked for me so keep that in mind as well so if you only want a recreational drive only and don't want to race as far as choosing a cart of course still pick a cart that you can get parts for easily but as far as what class of engine you get i think it's a little bit more open for you. There's still a couple of things that I don't recommend. Like I don't recommend getting a shifter cart as your very first cart if you've never driven a go-kart before. Um, it's going to be pretty overwhelming and you're probably going to walk away frustrated. I've seen people do it, but those people were really patient and took their time and, and were safe when they were learning. And that's another thing too that I recommend is learn your lines, be patient, and, and be safe because you don't want to get hurt out there. So a couple of final tips I have for you, and if you've got other tips um, for, for pr prospective new carters, leave them in the comments below, and let's just share our knowledge with everybody getting started, because I know that when I got started in carting, it's really hard to find information in one place that can really help you. So hopefully this video is doing that for you. My first tip for those of you wanting to get into carting is you have to understand that these aren't toys. Carts can be dangerous and you can get hurt. So I want you to understand what you're getting into and that this you can get hurt doing this sport. If you're planning on racing, be realistic in your expectations. It's highly unlikely you're gonna come into karting as a brand new driver and just mop the floor with everybody at the track. You know, I don't care if you're the best baseball player or whatever, um, this is a different sport. And it takes time, just like anything, to get good at it. I definitely recommend talking to the other racers at the track. Make friends with them, learn from them. They will, I've learned that the karting community is very welcoming and they wanna help you and they wanna you know, help you get better and get faster. So pick the brains of your fellow racers and competitors and uh, just learn from them. Be, be ready to learn because there's a lot to learn and you're always gonna be learning something new. Also, don't try to keep up with everyone else in regards to their budget. You know what they're spending their budget is their budget your budget is your budget so you know if the person shows up next to you in the big long trailer um, with the brand new go-kart and all this brand new stuff don't feel like you have to have those things to be able to compete that's definitely not true just 
you know what your budget is and, and be comfortable there and stay there. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Last but not least, have fun. Carding is such a blast. I love carding. Um, it's really nice to, and I speak for a lot of people I think when I say this, it's nice to be able to go to the track and spend a day at the track and you don't really have to worry about anything else going on in your life. So I know a lot of us, everyone has something that they're dealing with and going out to the track for me at least, it kind of helps me forget about everything else that's going on. And especially when you're on the track driving, I really enjoy those few minutes of just intense focus of you and your cart and trying to maximize that cart's performance and your performance as well. It takes a lot of concentration and when you're doing that, you're not thinking about anything else. So I really enjoy that about this sport and carding is just so much fun. So remember why you got into carding, you got into carding number one to have fun. So just keep that in mind. All right, so those are my tips for getting into carding. I hope you found them useful and helpful. And again, if you have some other tips for, for people watching this channel, leave them below in the comments. And as always, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, like and subscribe if you already haven't. And I will see you next time. That's it, huh?